Welcome to the Red Carpet Movie Review. Today we're going to review the latest movie from the Thor franchise. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Hollywood, California, welcome to the Red Carpet Review. Starring the showstopper, Sean Valentino. Also starring Rich Twilling. Today, we review Thor Ragnarok. Live from the red carpet. Hey everybody, this is Sean Valentino, your host on the Red Carpet Movie Review. And today we're going to review Thor Ragnarok. Now, Thor Ragnarok is directed by Taika Waititi, and it stars Chris Hemsworth and an ensemble cast including Kate Blanchett, Anthony Hopkins, and Jeff Goldblum. So you have an Oscar-winning cast of great actors here, and I really enjoyed the first two Thor movies. I thought they were excellent fish-out-of-water stories, and I really enjoyed the chemistry between Chris Hemsworth and Natalie Portman in those films. But unfortunately, this film is an absolute disaster. Now, the story of this film revolves around Thor attempting to escape the land of Sakaar, where he's being imprisoned. And he has to take on his old friend, the Incredible Hulk, in a gladiator-like battle. And after that, he needs to take on Hela, who's played by Kate Blanchett in this film. And Hela is attempting to unleash the prophecy of Ragnarok, which will destroy the planet of Asgard. Now, before I go on to share my thoughts on this movie, I wanted to go back to my favorite superhero film of all time, and that was Superman, the movie. And before that movie was made, the director, Richard Donner, had a sign that said, Verisimilitude. And by that, he meant absolute truth, meaning even though you're dealing with a superhero comic book universe, he wanted to add an element of reality, and he wanted to ground it in an internal logic. And you go back to the best superhero movies of all time, including Superman 1 and 2, Spider-Man 1 and 2, the Dark Knight trilogy, and even the first Iron Man. And all those films had three things in common. One, they all featured a larger than life superhero that was attempting to assimilate in a normal environment. And in the best comic book adaptations, the hero is trying to balance his superpowers with his responsibility to use them properly and serve humanity. Like that great line in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And the second thing these great films have in common is you have a superhero that shares a strong relationship with a human and that really gives a heart and vulnerability to the character. For example, Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, Bruce Wayne and Alfred, Clark Kent and Lois Lane, and even in the Thor movies, his relationship with the Natalie Portman character really added a tinge of humanity to the picture and made for a stronger film. And third, even though you're dealing with a comic book superhero universe, it has to be grounded in some sense of reality. And I think that's what made those great superhero movies so good, is that you really immersed yourself as an audience member in the world they were creating. Just think about the Dark Knight trilogy, you really felt that Gotham City was a living, breathing place, and it almost served as another character in the film itself. And when you can create that universe that the audience can immerse themselves in, you really have a much stronger picture. But my problem with superhero films recently is they feel like big video game mishmashes. I saw that in the recent Justice League movie, and I think it's even worse in this Thor movie. It feels like an overbloated cartoon with so much CGI that you really disconnect yourself from the film. And I don't know about you guys, wasn't the Fire God character of Searcher here the exact same villain we just saw in Justice League? And again, I thought what made the first two Thor movies so compelling to watch was they had all three of those elements that I just mentioned. Now, earlier this year, you had one of the best superhero movies of all time in Wonder Woman. And ironically, what made Wonder Woman work so well, and I mentioned it in my Red Carpet review, was it was influenced like pictures like Superman and the Thor series in the sense that it took a godlike character who was attempting to adapt to Earth and adapt to everyday people and it's how these films feature their everyday struggles that makes these characters so relatable and interesting to watch. And I thought the best scenes in Wonder Woman were her interactions with Steve Trevor, not the action sequences. Unfortunately, this movie seems to be more influenced by the action sequences in Wonder Woman than in the interpersonal relationships, which are non-existent in this movie. And the one personal relationship that they try to build up is the one between Thor and Loki. And I don't know about you guys, I just don't understand why Thor 
continues to trust Loki. This is a villain that has attempted to destroy the world, destroy him and his friends, but for some reason Thor continuously tries to trust him and build a relationship with him, which makes absolutely no sense and totally takes me out of the movie completely. I don't know if they had a lot of fun playing basketball in Asgard as they were kids, but, but I think we've gotten to the point where we know for sure that Loki cannot be trusted. And it's absolutely ridiculous how they continue to build films around Thor attempting to build his relationship with his brother. Another thing I hated about this movie was the goofy tone. It tries way too hard to be funny and it fails miserably. In fact, the only times I was laughing in this movie were the times they were trying to be serious and it came off as way too hokey. And I kind of understand what they're trying to do because of the success of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise and how those movies have blended action and humor. But this is the story of Thor, which is rooted in Norse mythology, and it's supposed to have an element of gravitas and seriousness to it. And that's what made those first two pictures so fun, is because they're really able to balance that funny fish out of water element with the larger than life character of Thor in the Norse mythology. But unfortunately here you have an endless series of meta self-referential jokes that just aren't funny at all. It just comes across as really contrived and stupid. And you have characters like the Incredible Hulk which are rooted in a very serious somber tone continuously attempting to make bad jokes. And I thought Mark Ruffalo here was just absolutely awful. For some reason he had some stupid whiny voice and he reminded me of Owen Wilson. Why not just have Owen Wilson play Incredible Hulk in the next movie if this is the direction you're going to take the character? And the reason this humorous tone works so well in Guardians of the Galaxy is that it fit the universe it was trying to create. In that film you have a raccoon unyielding a machine gun, so obviously you require a funnier tone to that setting. But the only time you have this many meta-references work is if you're developing a satire, something like a scream. But when you're trying to create a universe that you want the audience to take seriously, this type of humor is just not going to work. But I could have given my pass at the lame attempts at comedy if you had a really nice story and some great cinematography to work with. I thought all the characters were way too silly. You have Oscar winning actors like Kate Blanchett. You have Anthony Hopkins, who's probably one of the best actors of all time, and they're delivering all these goofy lines, and it just came across as really grating to watch and really uncomfortable. So what you have here is a jumbled mess of superhero characters trying way too hard to be funny and failing at it miserably, and really lame, underdeveloped supervillains. And the best villains in these movies are usually grounded in some sense of reality, like the Joker and Lex Luthor. But when you have a CGI created super villain and also just a goofy godlike character like Hela, you're not going to get a very interesting story. And obviously Marvel and DC are going to continue making these movies, but hopefully in the next few films in these franchises, they're going to deconstruct these characters and the world that they're living in to something that's more relatable and something that really fits in line with the three elements that I mentioned earlier. And again, that's what they did with Wonder Woman. That's what made that such a fantastic film to watch. Overall, I thought this movie was one of the worst films of the year, right down there with The Mummy and the latest Transformers movie. And if this is the direction that these comic book movies are headed, I want to escape from their universe. Because if you're over the age of 10 and you enjoyed this mess, there's probably a good chance that your IQ is under 10. And we here at the Red Carpet Review like to rate our movies on a 5 star scale. And I'm going to give Thor Ragnarok 1 star on the 5 star scale. Hope all of you enjoyed this red carpet review of Thor. Now we have one of our Marvel movie experts over here. Now what did you think about this red carpet review of Thor Ragnarok? Exactly. Thank you for that expert opinion. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click that like button and press subscribe. And we'll see you next week on the red carpet. Exactly. <laughs>